So very often in organic chemistry, chemical reactions are described using reaction mechanisms. So what exactly is a reaction mechanism and what does it help us to achieve? Well, a reaction mechanism simply helps us to paint a picture of what our reaction actually looks like. And every chemical mechanism should include the following three important details. Firstly, we should always include the energy of the products, reactants, and transition state. Secondly, we should include the structure of our reactants, products, as well as transition state. And we should also include the stereochemical analysis of our reaction. In other words, according to point one, is our reaction exothermic or endothermic? Is it exergonic or endorgonic? In the first step, we, in the second step, we actually have to figure out how our reactants react in what way, in what manner to produce our products. And in the first point, we should also include the rate of our reaction. So point one and two really deals with the thermodynamics of our reaction. And point three deals with the kinetics of our reaction. So our rate law determines our rate of our reaction. So let's write the reaction mechanism for the following equation, for the following reaction. So what is the reaction mechanism of the following SN2 substitution nucleophilic bimolecular reaction? So let's suppose we have the following two reactants. We have the substrate and nucleophile react to produce our products. Now this equation goes both ways. We have the forward as well as the reverse direction. So in the reverse direction, this acts as a nucleophile, kicking off this leaving group and forming our two products. So let's describe the reaction mechanism. So first we want to point out what the energy of the products, reactants, and transition state is. So let's do this by drawing our energy diagram. So our y-axis is the change in Gibbs free energy under standard state conditions and our x-axis is our reaction progress going from reactants to products. So notice we're dealing with an exothermic reaction. So our reactants are less stable than our products. The bonds in the products are more stable and that means our products will be lower in energy and our Gibbs free energy will be negative. And that means we're dealing with an exergonic reaction. So according to the Hammond postulate, our transition state structure will be closer to our reactants than the products. So that means our activation energy of the transition state will be closer to the left than to the right. So the highest point on this energy diagram represents the energy of our transition state. The transition state is midway between our reactants and the products. So once again, the products are more stable than reactants and hence we have an exergonic reaction. So now let's actually label, well let's create our stereochemical analysis of our reaction. How do our reactants actually react to produce our products? And what does our transition state actually look like? So, we have the nucleophile using its pair of electrons to attack the carbon via a backside approach, kicking off this leaving group and breaking this bond between the iodide and our carbon, forming the following two products. We have the new carbon O bond and our leaving group has now detached. So our transition state will look like this. We're going to have a partially formed bond between oxygen and carbon and a partially broken bond between our leaving group and our carbon. Now, this leaving group, our iodide, will have a partial negative charge. This will have a partial negative charge as well. So, once again, the lone pair of electrons on nucleophile takes the backside approach displacing the leaving group. The transition state has a carbon that is approximately sp2 hybridized. So once again, this analysis of our reaction helps us determine how our reactants react to produce our products and what our transition state actually looks like. This helps us paint a picture of the energy analysis of our reactants products as well as transition state. This activation energy also determines our rate of our reaction. Finally, let's look at what the rate law of an SN2 reaction is. 
So SM2 means both of these reactants react to produce our products and both of these reactants are important in determining what the rate law of our reaction is. So rate is equal to constant of the full reaction multiplied by the subject concentration multiplied by this nucleophile concentration. So rate depends on both of these reactants, on the substrate as well as our nucleophile. So the reaction mechanism helps us paint the entire depiction, the entire picture of what our reaction looks like. This is not the reaction mechanism. This is part of the reaction mechanism. This is our stereochemical analysis of our reaction. On top of specifying this, we also have to specify the energies as well as the rates of our reaction whenever we want to fully depict the reaction mechanism.